My quest for weird quirky Android phones has led to this. Yes, it's a flip phone. Yes, it's Android. And yes, it's touch. This is another one of those smartphones that tries to blend the form factor of the old with the features of the new. Flip Android phones aren't necessarily a new thing. Samsung has made quite a few in the past, typically in China, at exorbitant prices. But this one is from LG and it's from Korea. Design-wise, it's not that interesting per se. When it's closed, it's roughly the size of an iPhone 5S. Some flip Android phones have touchscreens on the front, so when closed, you can use it more like a typical Android phone. This one does not. Instead, we just get a tiny LED notification light on the front. This LG Wine Smart 3G here is actually a 2014 low to mid-range phone, and I still paid 40 bucks for it. Great financial decisions, yo. But most importantly, it has a touchscreen. Now, when I previously used another phone, that did not have a touchscreen based on Android and was just completely um, button navigation, it was such a hassle to use because even though it had a Google Play Store, it was very hard to use any third-party app because pretty much all developers don't target these kind of phones. They all target touchscreens. So on this phone, you needed to switch the D-pad into mouse cursor mode, which placed the mouse cursor on your screen, which you navigated by and moved by using the D-pad. This one is so much better because you can use the touchscreen as a fallback. And LG has made it a pretty pleasant experience to use. Even though this phone is running the Snapdragon 400, which is an old processor, one gig of RAM, it still feels fast. I actually enjoy the experience of this versus this phone obviously and Nokia 8110 which is slow and is not that pleasant of experience. This one surprisingly is good. Well, with some caveats. So first off, we have a decent uh, 360p panel on the front. It's 3.7 inches, which is not that big, but it has a high refresh rate and combine that with the software that's on it, it actually is responsive, the animations are relatively fluid. Secondly is the way LG has done the UI and sprinkled some of the nice stuff on top of it. They have two home screens, one is the easy home, one is the normal home which is this, both of which don't have app drawers, you access them by pressing this app button here, which would open up the app drawer, and you can press and hold it by the way to bring up multitasking, and press it once in a normal app to bring up the menu button. Remember the menu button? Yeah. LG has also done a few things that we're used to, on normal feature phones. For example, you have the option in settings to close an app when the flip closes. This is brilliant as I actually know from experience that my grandparents are used to going home not by pressing the hang up key but by closing the phone and opening it. So this is a simple thing that I applaud them for doing. Other quality of life improvements include holding the hash key to bring down notifications, holding the star key to cycle between vibrate and ringer, and LG has put in shortcuts to the bottom D-pad. To the right and left of the D-pad, we have shortcuts to messages, Kakaotalk, which is a very popular messaging app in Korea, the spacebar key, and the language uh, change key. If you press the messaging key on the home screen, you bring up the messages app. You can press and hold it to start a new conversation. The language key, when not typing, brings up the gallery, the space bar key when on the home screen brings up contacts and Kakao Talk obviously brings up the Kakao Talk app. Considering there is no shortcut to up, down, left, right on the D-pad, well, you do get to select things on the home screen. So I guess that's something. It's really nice to have these shortcuts and it reminds me a lot of the old phones of back then, which is a good thing. There are three big issues I have with this phone though. One is the typing experience. Not as if the physical keyboard here is bad. It's pretty good. It's very tactile. It's the software with the typing experience. This phone was never intended to leave Korea. And as such, the English typing keyboard is not great. The stock LG keyboard does not have predictive text, does not have the ability for you to move to the next character quickly. So if you're, for example, typing the word ABC, you have to wait about half a second before you can move to the next character. While on feature phones of the past, you could just click the right button to just quickly shift and get out of the wait time. You can't do that on this so it's not that pleasant to type on however it could be solved with software but the only one i can find on that that supports t9 is the google ping and keyboard and it works ish predictive text is back so i can actually text pretty quickly but there are a few issues i have no option to disable predictive text 
Typing symbols still requires me to touch the screen. And oh yeah, the screen. It always keeps a soft keyboard on the screen at all times. So it takes up precious screen real estate when I'm typing. I have been looking online to see if I can extract APKs out of other flip phones to see if I can get something that is more usable. But the big issue I have is this phone is from 2014. Thus, this phone is stuck in KitKat. And it's really hard for me to find software uh, or a flip phone that is modern enough that I can install the third-party keyboard on this phone. Secondly, it's still the experience of third-party apps. Well, LG has made their stock apps pretty nice to use. So for example, the messaging apps, buttons are big. I don't have too much confusion of if I press which direction on the D-pad where my selection will go. It's pretty well thought out. In fact, I'll just put it a bit shy under KaiOS when it comes to stock UI ease of use. However, pretty much every third-party app I've experienced here doesn't really support D-pad navigation. Telegram, Spotify, Relay, Instagram, all of them treat the D-pad as just a scroll device. So I can use it to scroll up and down my feed, or my chats and whatever, but everything else you have to touch the screen to do. WhatsApp is one of the few apps that kind of supports D-pad navigation, but it's still very half-baked and you really still need to touch the screen to do anything. Surprisingly though, you can actually answer calls with the call key, though you need to hang up by tapping the screen still. And whenever you're using these apps in touchscreen mode, it's not a pleasant experience because first of all, you have to shimmy your hand up here, and then you can now touch the screen. And at that point, it feels like you're using the most uncomfortable touchscreen phone with the worst screen to body ratio. Lastly, it's just the storage. 4 gigs of storage is not a lot. Overall, I actually really enjoyed my time with this device. Yes, I cannot use a lot of third-party apps without going and touching the screen, but I came in expecting that. And it's just a nice fallback to have. As a secondary phone to get away from phones, but still kind of remain contactable, it's pretty cool. As it allows me to be outside, not be distracted by my phone because I will be forced to use this small screen and not so fast typing experience while still allowing me the conveniences of checking my transit directions and ordering a cab through apps like Uber and Grab. Do I think that this makes sense as a primary phone though? Absolutely not. Even if this phone had a touchscreen on the front, you would then be spending all your time on the, like this. Doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Take a phone, smaller battery, all that thing. The only thing I wish is that I didn't overpay for this phone because this phone costs 40 US dollars used not mint and it doesn't even have 4G. So 